In the name of the living God, who is Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. That's what the shepherds said after they were out on the hillside in the cool of the evening taking care of their sheep and an angel appeared to them. They were scared to death, but the angel said, don't worry, I've got good news. The person who will be your Savior, your Messiah, and your Lord has just been born in Bethlehem. And with that, other angels came and lots of light and probably music. Who knows, it was a dramatic presentation. And they were singing glory to God in the highest heaven. And after all of that, the shepherds said, we got to go see this thing. Something important is going on in Bethlehem and we've got to go see it and share what we have been told. And so they did. And we want to do the same thing. We want to go to Bethlehem and see the birth of Jesus, see the baby Jesus. That's why we're here tonight. The story is in the hymns that we sing. It's in the lessons that you hear. It's in stories that are being told, prayers that are being said, the music that we listen to, and in our imagination, which is a gift from God, in our imagination, we can go there to Bethlehem for the birth of Jesus. Several nights ago, I was uh, locking up the house and turning out the lights when I realized that the light in our alpaca shed was still on. The alpaca shed was about, it was about 250 feet behind the back of our house. And um, it was about 10 o'clock at night. I decided I better go and turn that light off. So I walked out into the dark of the night. There were some stars shining. And, and walked, following that light, walked, walked to the alpaca shed. And um, as I got to the walk-in space, the sort of, you know, porch, um, the three alpacas, our three senior females, were kneeling there. Not, they hadn't gone to bed yet. They were kneeling there, sort of enjoying the night air. And I walked in, and where the light, the light switch is on the inside of the shed, I walked in, and there was, a, there was a straw on which they lie down. About 35 bales of hay on one side of the shed, uh, fit stall so the alpacas wouldn't eat it all before it was time to eat it. There were water buckets, heated water buckets. And um, I had to think about this. It was a stable. They weren't camels, they were, al they were alpacas, but they were part of the camelid family. There were three of them, they were kneeling down. I didn't see the baby Jesus, I didn't see Joseph or Mary, but I just sort of thought about that event a little bit. And then I realized these, these three alpacas came from Peru. And the oldest one, the oldest one is named Navidad. Navidad, which means Christmas or the birth of Jesus, um, the nativity. And I thought even more, what if I could be there? How, went, how could I get closer to that event so I could really experience in a, in a, in a, in a larger way how God, through Jesus, became one of us? I kept thinking about Navidad, and I thought about that song, you know, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad. <laughs> And it ends with, um, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Now, 
what I'm trying to say here is that our first desire is to see what happened in that stable in Bethlehem, to see it so that maybe we could believe it even more. I mean, we do believe it, but just, you know, it's a curious thing we'd like to see. But the second inclination is to feel it from the bottom of our hearts. To feel it from the bottom of our hearts. And the way this reading, which you just heard, the way it goes on is, but Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Mary the mother was going there and she, she had a lot of information to process. And she was a strong woman. And she pondered all of these things in her heart. But here's the basic message for us to ponder. This whole story of Navidad, of the Nativity, this whole story is about love. I mean, God loves humans, in this case, loved humans so much that God, all-powerful God, chose to live among us as a human. I mean, for all other gods we've ever heard about, I mean, that's a pretty tricky thing. Our God chose to live with us as humans, as a way to tell the world that God loves us and trusts us and wants to be just as close to us as possible. That was God's choice. The thing is, we also have a choice. We can choose to receive that, that amazing, life-changing love of God into our hearts and share it with other people. Share it with other people so that God's will can be fulfilled in this world. So that good things can happen. I send out emails from time to time to parishioners and one that I sent out last week was about learning more about Christianity and um, I got a response. Uh, it wasn't about the book that we were going to study but it was about it was about this. It was about Christmas. And what this parishioner did was shared a, a word art, you know, with words making sort of a picture of a, of a Christmas tree is what it was. And it's pretty fascinating because really it's a collection of things that we might do with other humans because of the fact that we love God and we feel loved by God. Here's a list. You could come up with your own list, but here's a list this is pretty interesting. If we felt loved by God, and if we wanted to do God's will in this world, here are some things we might do. This Christmas, end a quarrel. Seek out a forgotten friend. Dismiss suspicion. And replace it with trust. Write a love letter. Share some treasure. Give a soft answer. Keep a promise. Find the time. Forego a grudge. Here's a big one. Forgive an enemy. Listen. Apologize if you're wrong. Try to understand. Examine your demands on others. Think first of someone else. Be kind. Be gentle. Appreciate. Laugh a little. Laugh a little more. Express your gratitude. Gladden the heart of a child. Welcome a stranger. Take pleasure in the beauty and the wonder of earth. Speak your love. Speak it again. Speak it yet once again. The story of this day is the miracle that God became human. But it goes a step beyond that. It goes to the point that we do have that choice to receive 
God's amazing love. And we do realize, and this is why sometimes we are frightened and don't do it, we do realize that when we receive God's love, it is a life changer. And we just might do some of these things that I just listed or some other things to bring about more love in this world, or peace, or justice. Each one of us is here tonight because we know that tonight is a special night. We know that it's something that we want to see and imagine again and again because the birth of Jesus has changed the course of history of the world. But here's the real challenge. How will the birth of Jesus and that expression of God's love change your lives? We have a chance to make that decision every single day of our lives. We just sang one of my favorite hymns. It's about this very thing. And Jesse, can you help us with this? I'd like for us, don't get up, don't stand up, just in your pews sitting. If you turn to hymn 112, the, sound, the hymn that we just sang, in, your, in the hymnal, and I'd like to us to sing verse 4 one more time. 